General Focus, creators of visual programming tools for software development, is pleased to provide major funding for the Computer Chronicles, the story of this continuing evolution. Gary, what I have here is a ROM chip in this cartridge, and I'm going to take this ROM chip and stick it inside this machine and load it in there and press a couple of buttons, and if everything works according to plan... This is an example of, of computer music, and computer music is our subject today. This, this little RAM pack, which I have over here, has 15 songs on it. Uh, matter of fact, there's a, a ROM chip of the month club now where you can buy your popular songs on a chip instead of on a, a cassette tape or, or on a record. Uh, this is a, a simple example, but, but how does a computer make music? How is it doing this? Well, as you're aware, Stuart, this is a very special device. It's not a general-purpose computer. Uh, but most of the home computers that uh, are available now, like the Commodore 64 or the IBM personal computer, have special hardware for sound generation or mm -hmm. tone generation. And what you do is you write a program in uh, BASIC or LOGO or one of those languages, if you like, and, and then you can produce a tone, series of tones and certain frequency and duration. Uh, and I understand there's also, there are also some software packages coming about that are like word processing packages, only it's for music processing mm -hmm. or score processing. And uh, it's going to be interesting today, I think, because we have some real experts that will tell us all about it. Indeed we will. We'll be meeting Will Harvey, the author of Music Construction Set. We'll see a demonstration of the Alpha Centauri music system. And there are two major centers for computer music in the country, one here in Northern California at Stanford. We'll be meeting the director of the Stanford Center later on in the program. First, let's go across the country to Cambridge, Massachusetts, and a visit to MIT's Experimental Music Studio. <laughs> The use of computers in musical composing is not a new idea, but recent advances are giving composers a new degree of power over their medium, the ability to create and manipulate sound waves of their own design. Systems like MIT's Music 100 can dissect a note into its sound wave components. The composer can then make adjustments to each aspect of the note's physical characteristics independently and instantly. Specially developed music languages translate the sound processing as specified by the composer. From this input, a digital data stream is computed. Finally, the digital form is translated into a signal for amplification, pre-recorded, and played back over audio tape during the performance. A computer that can reassemble the building blocks of a sound wave opens up a new spectrum to the composer and the musician a range of sounds beyond the natural limits of mechanical instruments and the human voice. In a sense, the music program can compose not only the score, but the instrument as well. The next step in computer-composer interaction is real-time production synthesis, a live interactive performance between computer and instrument. To achieve this kind of instantaneous but programmed manipulation requires very high-speed computers capable of several hundred million calculations per second. <laughs> 